All right, we all know that the second you drive a car off the lot, it loses value. But if you want to sell it down the road, there are steps you can take to hold a majority of that value. Steve Hurley from Stingray Chevrolet joins us now to talk about what you can do to make sure you get the most bang for your buck in the long run. Steve, welcome back. Thanks. Good to be back. Everybody wants to buy a vehicle that's going to hold its value, but how much money do you lose when you t take it off the lot that first drive? It, it always costs you something to buy a new vehicle right after you drive off the lot. And the only reason we know that is because some people have a change in circumstances and want to trade that vehicle. You do take a beating. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to keep it for a little while, that kind of even out and it's not quite so severe, but they're all going to depreciate. You've got to do your homework. So what is the depreciation percentage, at least, when you drive off the lot? Yeah, I don't know if there's a set percentage. I think you could probably assume, and, and you got to keep in mind, too, when people refer to that, they're talking about from what they paid new mm -hmm. sure. to what the trade-in is, which is less than the retail of what the dealer will sell it. So it's a pretty good chunk. Sometimes it can be 15%. It could be as much as 25%. So domestic or foreign car? Well, the box for the imports gets checked in this one for the most part. Yeah. It's mainly your, your Toyota Tacoma is probably, most of the sites rate that the best. Mm. Uh, your Toyota Tundra is very good. Mm. Uh, many of your import models do hold up well. However, the domestics uh, and Chevrolet, for example, have some winners like the Camaro, the new uh, uh, Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon uh, are rated very highly. So it's not necessarily as well. luxury versus non-luxury. Typically, your lower price, that's a great question, because typically your lower price cars lose less, not only dollar-wise, but percentage-wise as well. Hmm. You get into your more expensive luxury cars, you lose 10% on that. That's going to be a lot different on an $80,000 car than one that's $20,000, oh. obviously. What about trucks versus cars? Any difference? Glad you brought that up. Trucks hold their value well. People really? like their trucks and their full-size SUVs. Does that, does that differ from region to region, though? It does. It does differ from region to region. Uh, it, up northeast, uh, you know, cars are more popular than mm -hmm. trucks, whereas down south, particularly in Texas, trucks are huge. But still, overall, uh, full-size SUV, crossover SUVs, and trucks tend to hold their value very, very well. You can't find a, a Tahoe for under $10,000 in any year. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What and about geography? <coughs> what, and and mm -hmm. I'm not talking about what people's taste is, but people who live in the north and have right. salt and all that business, does that affect the value of their car Makes versus a, a car difference. that's been driven here? No doubt. A lot of times those cars, you need to do your homework, try to look at the, where the vehicle is from. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes those vehicles get shipped down to the auctions down here. You may be buying one of those salt road vehicles. Yeah, you really so you've have got to, to be careful. Under. But also up north, if you've got a four-wheel drive vehicle, Subaru does exceptionally well in the northeast and the, and the northwest mm -hmm. because they're all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, and people really like that. Helps it hold the value. All right, let's talk about, this is the million-dollar question. Mm -hmm. What is the source to go to to find out what vehicles hold their value best? There are many good sources, but they're the ones that I usually refer to, sources like Kelly Blue Book, kbb.com, uh, which is kellybluebook.com, uh, autotrader.com, cars.com. You can check those sources. But if you do your homework, you can find these things out. But resale value isn't everything. It's got to fit your needs as a driver. You've got to make sure that you're purchasing a vehicle that fits your needs, and sometimes that outweighs the depreciation. And uh, how do you know for sure the history of whether that car has been in an accident or not? Is it the Carfax? Is that you can it? typically look at Carfax. That's a good. That's a good resource, and most dealers are aware of that. If, and that's a good part about buying from a dealer. They'll show you the Carfax if you request it. Yeah, because if it's been underwater, yeah. you don't want. It. Don't want to go there. <laughs> well, that would not be a good thing. Huh? No, not at all. Thank, Thank you. you. Good so to see much. Much. you. Too. Yeah, good to see you too. And for more information, you could head to StingrayChevrolet.com. We'll be right back.